Developer update, competitive defense matrix, and more. And guess what? We got our very own Blizz Winter in the chat, aka Gavin, who is doing this one apparently. Also, I like your shirt. It's time. Are we ready? Is this where Gavin becomes a star and leaves us for Hollywood? Let's find out. Good to go anytime. Let me see. Good. Good to go anytime. Camera roll. Hey everyone, I'm Gavin Winter, senior systems designer on the Overwatch team. We're back with another developer update to talk to you a little bit about some of the upcoming competitive changes. My teammate, senior research scientist Natasha Miller, will tell us about updates to Defense Matrix a little later. Heck yeah. A few weeks ago, we heard from Aaron that heroes are coming out of the battle pass and they'll be available for free. Okay, I gotta ask one question though. As we go to the beginning here, did you did did you have to do a take of an edit there where you where you had her go like this when you're not even there? Like, did, did somebody just say, hey, shake your head up and down, yes? Like, you're actually having... <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's great. ...the day they launch. He also talked about the new Mythic Shop, as well as the upcoming Clash playtest. He closed with a little sneak peek at what we're covering in this developer update. Season 10 is just around the corner, and we're excited to share these changes with you, starting with how we're updating the way you can play with friends this season. I'm ready. So, let's talk about exactly how that'll work. We think Overwatch is at its best when you're playing with friends. Yep. So our new system in Season 10 lets any rank group with any other rank. That means, for example, if you're Plat and mm -hmm. you've never been able to group with your friend in Bronze, you yep. will be able to do that now. We'd refer to your- So just to give you an idea, Meme and Vent can now play with each other here. Vents and Plat, Memes and Bronze. So now they're able to actually game together without having to log in alt accounts, which is why I do think this is like a huge, like underrated, like, I feel like this is like a super like underrated thing I've been talking about where like I'm looking forward to this because I think it's going to be really fun. Obviously, it's, it's cautiously, cautiously optimistic, but I'm very much looking forward to this. Like, I think it's going to be really cool. Your group as a wide group because you and your friend are pretty far apart. There are some trade-offs for wide groups, though. They mm -hmm. only play against other wide groups. Yep. The queue times could be longer and the matches will be sillier. <laughs> <laughs> we'll still use our role delta tech to try to match you against similarly well, why don't you call it silly matchmaking then? Why wide matchmaking? Just call it silly, you know? Go with it. Shape groups. So if you're a plat tank and your friend is a bronze support, we'll try to find another plat tank and bronze support to match you to against. Oh, you can't see at the end of a wide match, you'll see a That's new modifier bad. just for this system. Avoiding boosting is really important to us. Mm -hmm. So the wider your group is, the less your rank will change after any match. Okay. If you're bronze and you're grouped with a champion player, you can expect almost no change to your rank, regardless of the outcome. We expect all this to be a Wait huge Wait a second. Uh, just to pause again here. Does this mean that I can, that they, the, 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 the group and restrictions are gone for champion? Or no? So like, are, are, are we good now? Like, are we able to play with anybody in like top 500? Like, no matter what? Like, we're just, that's it? Like, we can, we're, we're good now? We officially hit, we can play with anybody. Because that, that, that's what I would like to hear. Because I didn't know if they were going to keep that for champion. Champion and, okay, so champion and GM are able to group, but all GM, GM plus all groups are considered wide. Okay, so if you're a GM with a with a champion, you'd be in that wide matchmaking category. Okay, that makes sense. That's cool. I see. I like that because now I get to play with my friends again. Which, as chat knows, that's been one of the most difficult issues for years is the inability to play with your friends. So, and I was gonna also say, Gavin probably loved recording this because Gavin has been in this chat for like over a year now and has probably heard me say that the words "play with my friends" like 500 times. You said you're glad top streamers can get together and dominate all matches. Congrats. If you think we're going to dominate all matches, you have not seen our five stacks. Match quality win for our solo players because they'll never play against wide groups. We think of groups that are close in rank as narrow. So narrow matches will only be solos and narrow groups. All this means that, like that. you'll be able to choose whether you want to prioritize the highest match quality or playing with friends. We're also expecting to see fewer smurfs after these changes too since we know some players were only creating alt accounts to play, play with competitive friends. with their friends. Yep. We've heard your request for more void slots, but having more than three in our current system breaks matchmaking for high skill players. Okay. We realize that basing our avoid count on that restriction hamstrings the system for 99% of players though. So to add all the new features we're about mm -hmm. to discuss, we had to rethink what it means to avoid players from the ground up. First off, we're increasing- the And this is where they're gonna announce that you can get avoid slots in the shop. It's going to be five dollars per avoid slot, and they're going to become a billion dollars, billion dollars in the in the first week. <laughs> Listen, first of all, that's obviously not happened, but I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, if avoid if avoid slots are in the shop, Blizzard would be able to the next 
quarterly meeting that they have at Blizzard and like Microsoft now, they'd be like, how did how did you manage to make $12 billion in two and a half weeks? What collabs are you doing? Oh, that wasn't a collab. That was a void slots. They're not actually doing that, but imagine. The number of avoid slots to 10. We're also going to let you pin some avoided players so that they never fall off your list. The trade-off we make to get these I features like that, by is the way. related okay. to our next new feature. You'll and, and I'm sorry that I keep pausing on you, Gavin, here. You're coming up with good information. Having the pinned one is important because a lot of players like will have a player that's been like, you know, just someone you don't want to play with. They've just been they've been causing issues, they like you don't you don't gel. There's a lot of stuff there. And like you have to make these avoid swaps sometimes right so you'll like unavoid somebody but then now you can pin those avoids which means that you don't have to deal with that anymore because of that that player especially is causing issues because sometimes you'll unavoid him and the next thing you know you get him in your game again because you had a you know you have i don't i don't use avoid slots but a lot of people do and there's nothing wrong with that it, it's like so you'd have issues with like players who are consistently just causing issues in your game you don't see them for a couple days you you unavoid them you avoid somebody else and the next thing you know they're in their game I'll be able to prioritize your avoid list where players at the top are most likely to be avoided. For players below Grandmaster, that's most of us, you can expect all 10 avoid slots to be reliable, but we still want to give you the tools to organize your list by how much you dislike the players on it. For our <laughs> high skill players, this feature is particularly important because if we can't find- What are you making your MySpace top 10 here of the most hated players you have in your games? They're bringing back the MySpace top 10 or whatever. They're bringing it to Overwatch, but for your avoid list. I, I love the way that Gavin explains that. I, just, I gotta watch that back one more time. I <laughs> avoid list, where players at the top are most likely to be avoided. For players below Grandmaster, that's most of us, you can expect all 10 avoid slots to be reliable. But we still want to give you the tools to organize your list by how much you dislike the players on it. For our highest skill players, this feature is particularly important. Because if we can't find a balanced match, we'll start ignoring players at the bottom of the list in oh. order as queue time increases. Another area we're addressing will bring changes to our lever penalties for unranked and competitive play. Right now, I actually love that because now, what I love about that is now I can be like, listen, I know for a fact that I'm in the bottom of the tier of the avoid list, so they're not going to put me at the top. I'll be towards the bottom of those avoid lists. That's perfect. Right? I'll be like in that number 10, number 9, like, you know, we'll, we'll keep you there just in case you get on my team because you're clearly the reason why we lost. But we're going to put you at number 10 because I kind of like having you on my team. But, if, but you know, if my option is the OWL alt account player at, at 11 p.m. who's played their 25 games on the ladder or 50 games on the ladder and is camping the rest of the season, I want them on my team. Can we get but if not, I want you. Last on now too? On the unranked side, our I do like that change. kick in when you leave four out of your last 20 games and get worse when you leave six out of 20. We aren't changing those, but we are adding a more lenient five minute penalty if you've left two out of 20, and a much more harsh 48 hour penalty if you've left 10 out of your last 20 games. Now, there aren't a lot of players leaving more than 50% of their matches, but they do exist, and we think the game would be better without them most of the time. On the so just so you can see here, basically if you, if you leave one game in your 20 games, then you get a warning. If you leave two out of three, you get five minutes. If you leave four out of five, you get 20 minutes. If you leave six and nine games, which is which is pretty nice, if you ask me. First of all, we know that right here, Gavin did this on purpose. There is zero chance that Gavin did, did it. Like, they were sitting there talking about their systems. And then, then there was an opportunity to put six and nine here. We all, we, we I, I, I see right through this. I know exactly what's going on here, and that's super nice. Like you can't be mad at the four hours because that's super nice here on the six to nine, right? All right, 10 games, 10, 10 plus games left, you get 48 hours. First of all, if you're leaving 10 out of your 20 games, I mean, let's let's be honest here, that's a lot. Okay, and then competitive play, I'm just gonna read it here. I, Gavin might go into like, I just have like my, my screen covered it. One game left from ranked, you're, you have a 15 minute thing, that's the same right now. If you leave two games, two hours, if you leave three games, eight hours. If you leave four games, 20 hours. And if you leave five games, competitive season ban. And if you leave 10 games throughout the season, competitive season ban. It's a little confusing because it says if you're most recently games played. So if you leave all 10 of your ranked games, I don't, I, don't even, I don't know. On the competitive side, we're closing another edge case by suspending any players that leave more than 10 matches a season. We're also going to start counting matches completed and competitive toward the 20 game window for unranked. Okay. Finally. I want to talk to you about our improved anonymity feature. Thank you! We already had a streamer mode, but we're making this feature more useful to all players, not just streamers. 
right now, okay. this feature is... First of all, first of all, Gavin, I don't even think it was... Uh, uh, I, the current streamer mode, I don't think was necessarily good for streamers either, if I'm going to be honest with you. Although, I will always say the feature that allowed for you to, like, kind of change the names was very good. I always love that, but... <laughs> Client side only which means it only changes how yes. players' names appear on your screen. Yes, which is the, the problem. The big change we're making is adding server-side functionality. Thank which you. Which means we'll change how your name appears on everyone's screens Thank you. in your match. We think this is great for players who may experience harassment because of their battle tag and just want to queue up without any chance of that happening. Don't forget to report Thank players you. that harass you or Keep anyone the names? else. Keep the names? Wait. Great for players who may experience change we're making is adding server-side functionality. I'm looking. Which means we'll change how- So we have one shot, one kill, Mauga for life, and then did I see, and then Guff? I love that. We just have Guff. You think Guff's one of our devs? Oh. Can you, can we add Guff to the list now? Can we, can we put Guff in there? That's a great name. I don't know what it is about the name Guff. That's a great name. Your name appears on everyone's screens in your match. We think this is great for players who may experience harassment because of their battle she tag. Said just want to queue up without any chance of that happening. Don't forget to report players that harass you or anyone else, though. All the links to the forty-two months here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Don't worry. You. Players in streamer mode being disruptive in text chat or voice mm -hmm. can Anything still be hard? reported, avoided, and blocked, and penalties will still apply to them in exactly the same way as normal. Great change because we, we, we call that still a W. Their name yes, a W scenes. is correct. Next. Natasha will talk to you about our main initiatives to combat disruptive behavior. Thank you, Gavin. Just quickly pausing for one second. That's an absolute W across the board. All of the changes. I will I will keep saying this until I'm either correct or I'm incorrect on this one. I really believe that the season 10 ranked changes are actually huge and I think could be really good for the game. That's my initial thoughts. I really do think the ability to play with more friends and to be able to bring people back and to be able to go and like... One of the major issues you've always had with Overwatch, right, is that you can't play with your friends, right? And you'll have friends who, like, let's say your friend is an avid Fortnite gamer, right? But they like playing Overwatch, but you like playing Overwatch and you don't play as much Fortnite. So as your friend goes and plays the new season of Fortnite and you keep climbing the ranks in Overwatch, your friend's like, okay, I enjoyed Fortnite. I'm going to go try it Overwatch now because with any live service game, there's a lot of that rotation of players, right? There's a lot of rotation of those players. And they come back and you go, well, oh, I climbed a plat. You're like, oh, we were, what do you mean? I was in silver, silver five last time we played or bronze, bronze one. I can't play with you now. Now you can play with your friends again. So if your friends kind of are switching back and forth, which especially in a free to play game, I love that idea. Now, give it time. We'll see how queue times are. We'll see how it plays. But I think it's going to be very underrated. And I'm, I'm super excited to see where it goes. I think that's going to be really cool. Now, obviously, they call it silly match. Well, not silly matchmaking, but they said it was going to be silly, which we'll see. Obviously, we'll test that out in the first couple days. But yeah, anyway. Hiya, I'm Natasha Miller, Hello. a senior research scientist at Blizzard, working on defense matrix for Overwatch. While we are always working in many areas of combating disruptive behavior, today I want to talk about disruptive chat. I'll also touch on some of the tools that we're improving to help keep the community safe. We're listening. Disruptive chat can really negatively affect someone's experience in game. Mm -hmm. In our focus to curb this disruptive behavior, we are taking a multi-prong approach that will roll out over several seasons. Okay. Today, I'll discuss the first two coming Missy, out in the, the next few seasons. Thank you. Okay. In I'm our listening. first approach, we will prevent players at endorsement level zero from using text or voice chat. To be clear, the only way to get to endorsement level zero is by having your account action for an in-game infraction. Even brand new players start at endorsement level one. All right, chat, be real with me. Who in the chat is at endorsement level zero right now and won't be able to talk next season? Who in the chat is not going to be able to talk next season? <laughs> why? Wait, why is there that many people in chat who can't talk? What are you doing? No, stop doing what? No, stop doing that now. Whatever you're doing, that's not... <laughs> You're level five. Uh, Akasuna, thanks for the 13 months of the Free Fries. So thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, oh, you just got client banned? Oh, yeah, there you go. You said we don't show level zero in the UI. They just appear not to have it. Yeah, I think I've seen that before. I always thought that was just somebody logging on like a new account or something. So that makes sense now. So these are players that have proven themselves to be bad actors, so much so in the past that they received a penalty. This feature would allow those players to take a forced break in team and match channels until they work their way Garlic back up bread. to endorsement level one. And from there and all higher levels, chat would work as it did before. 
Remember, the best way to work your way back up to endorsement level one is to demonstrate good teamwork by trying your best, helping your team, and using the in-game ping system. In our second approach, and also just we not will being remove an chat functionality for spectators. You know what I mean? like spectators don't have an in-game need to use the chat channel. And by removing their ability to chat, we remove a channel that is increasingly being used by bad actors. Along with these improvements, we are looking at making it easier and faster to report. Oh, you can't say that part? That's fair. I mean, that makes sense. Does that, does that mean that people would join in like off their friends and just start like, like crap talking people? Like you just be in, like a quick play game and then somebody just joins in and just starts typing dumb stuff? Yeah, that makes sense. It, it's kind of like, remember when... It, 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 it's kind of like, remember when Overwatch used to have the general channel and we're just like, what is the point of this channel? Because it was it was never good. So if, if they find that the majority of the channel is just being people people being idiots, then why not, right? You know what I mean? Out of curiosity, do you know if that also affects custom games? It, it should definitely stay for custom games because custom games, coaches need to communicate stuff in there sometimes and like, and like admins. So like, I imagine... It should, it should not affect custom games. Okay, that's a good change then. Yeah, I, I have no problem with that change. I, I, have, I have no problem with that change. I, 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 and based off of chat's reaction to that? Yeah, that's fair, Gavin. That's fair. Yeah, that, that, that's something that everybody in the chat reacted to in like a positive manner. So clearly it's become a huge issue. So Any reportable offense, bin match. Okay. At the moment, our numbers indicate that most reporting is done towards the end or post-match. Okay. And one reason for this is that it's not quick to report min match. However, this could put pressure on players to remember that they need to report, mm -hmm. who to report, and what to report them for. Okay. All after the match. And at that point, they are likely more interested in just starting the next match. So we are hoping that by making it faster to report mid-match, more players will use the reporting system. This is very important because we rely on players to help us know what is happening in matches so that our mitigation systems can be more effective and reliable. Overall, making over... So if you if you hear hear that correctly, chat, what that will help do now is rather than report your tank that you think is feeding because tank can't get anything done right now, you can now report your tank in real time while also continuing to be able to play. Real talk, though, I mean that's great to have. I, th I think having that option because I think my guess is that when they report someone, it, if you the moment you report them, it gives them like kind of like based off of when you need to see what they're doing. So it might also just save them time too, like as in like if somebody says something stupid you report them immediately and you can do it quickly. Now that where you report them is a lot more focused. Does that make sense? Rather than just like, rather than just like, oh, you report them at the end of the game. You don't know exactly what it was for. So now it gives a little bit better. So yeah, that would be good to have as a system. Watch a safer community for everyone. Player feedback is a vital part of improving and optimizing these types of features. So we want to create mm -hmm. even more avenues for you to share your thoughts with us. In Season 11, we're introducing the first iteration of player surveys into Overwatch 2. This won't happen after every game because okay. survey participants will be chosen at random among the player base. The I'm survey will have. be prompted after the progression screen at the end of match flow. This means that you'll be able to watch the play of the game, give endorsements, and review progression without getting interrupted. Okay. Once the progression screen is that's closed, good to have. the survey will prompt the player for their feedback. I mean, that, that's not bad. I think having that type of feedback system is great. I also wonder the person who's going to have to read that feedback <laughs> sometimes. Like, they'll be like, all right, what's your feedback? Tank's terrible. Hey, tank's bad. How much did your team suck from one to five? I'm telling you, I had this player in my team named Garlic Bread. They were jumping off the map. What is going on here? Both console and PC players will get the option to give us feedback via a QR code. PC players may also choose to open the link in a separate browser. Surveys will ask questions about the game, including new modes, events, features, and how you feel about the way we're mitigating disruptive play. I think this is we're good, though. We're excited for this feature, and we look forward to continuing Clash to improve cool, by the, the game way. as this we gather Clash. more feedback. This new map looks awesome. These are just a few of the things we have been working on in this space. Mm -hmm. We will continue to bring you updates on our progress mitigating disruptive behavior via the Defense Matrix blocks which will get a refresh in the coming seasons to include even more on the impact this work is having in the community through transparency metrics. Defense Matrix and Competitive will always be core to Overwatch and will continue iterating, improving, and of course, listening closely to your feedback on these systems. So please keep sharing your thoughts with us and we can't wait to show you what we've been working on in season 10 and beyond. See you soon. Yeah. Natasha said you will not be getting an outtake out of me today. <laughs> well, that clip just came off. Any reportable event in... And they get... get and they get worse. Every... <laughs> and reliable.
You got so close to the end. All right, he's coming back for another pass. <laughs> Circling. Oh, that's great. Defense Matrix update, season 10 and beyond. Um, for anybody who's wondering this, uh, for missed stuff, this will give you a little bit more context. All right, we're back with a new Defense Matrix update in our efforts to keep Overwatch 2 a fun, safe, and in inclusive experience for everyone. Our latest developer update revealed new features that aim to bring friends together while protecting you from disruptive players. So don't type garlic bread. So let's dive a bit deeper into these changes and what you can expect in the coming seasons. Playing competitive with friends. Overwatch 2 has always been a game best played with friends. I agree. However, in competitive play, it may not always work to group if your friends are too far from your rank. That's why we're introducing wide groups in Season 10, and now you'll be able to play with your friends in competitive no matter their rank. Keep in mind, we talked about this a little bit. I think this is going to be awesome. Um, cautiously optimistic, but I think it's going to be really good for the game. So what exactly is a wide group? A wide group is where the highest and lowest ranked players are too a fart. Too a fart? <laughs> where high skill players are too far apart in skill tier and divisions. Any groups with diamond or lower ranked players that are more than five skill divisions apart are a wide group. Any groups with master players that are more than three skill divisions apart are also wide groups. Finally, any group that have a grandmaster or champion player are also wide groups, regardless of how many skill divisions they are apart. So just to summarize this for people who are just joining us or like wondering what this means, I, just to give you a, a really easy summary, you can play with your friends no matter what their rank is right now. I don't know how that goes for unranked. I, I, I can't comment on that. Like if it, if it changes based off of like unranked and things like that in general, but you can now play with your friends, no matter what their rank is, any of that stuff, you are now capable of doing that, which I think is very good for Overwatch. I still have to see how the queue times are, how it plays out, but I'm very happy to see that. With this new queue option come some trade-offs. For one, queue times will be longer, which will happen, as we work to pair you with other wide groups using roll delta tech to ensure the match is as close as possible. For example, a wide group with a platinum player and bronze player will be matched against another group with similar skill distribution to try and deliver the fairest match possible. However, some matches may not appear to be as balanced as you may encounter opponents who are very different in skill level than you are. Which is going to make sense. If you're bronze and like you were queuing with four GM players, your 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 game's going to be it's going to be like a, it, it's going to it's going to be silly like they said like you're going to be in there as a bronze player going what in the world's going on but at the same time you get to play with your friends right and sometimes the trade off of being able to play with your friends is just a better experience right you said this is a horrible idea now to what you just said to that I want to know why and the only reason why I ask why is because my my personal opinion is I love the idea so hearing the other point of view sometimes, though, is also help for me to understand where people are at across the board, right? So you said it's a terrible idea and what you don't like. What is the part that you don't like so that I can help, I can understand that more too. I'll continue on in the meantime, and if you type anything in the chat, I'll be able to go for it, all right? Um, thankfully, though, such encounters won't necessarily have as much of an impact on your progress in the competitive ranks, just like playing tank. All right, there will also be a new modifier at the end of a match when playing in a wide group. It wouldn't be fair for lower skilled players to be directly boosted to higher ranks when they're grouped with higher skilled players. So some groups, depending on the skill gap, are likely to see little to no change in their skill progression. This helps ensure that the high skilled pl skilled play skilled the high skilled players don't boost their lower ranked friends. So maybe if you're playing in a in a game with like your your top 500 player and they're bronze and they get one percent for winning. You didn't read that part? That's good? Oh, there you go. <laughs> hey, you know what? Maybe, is that, so there you go. I, I love that. Like, but that's why they put that there, though, too. It's important to ask those questions or, like, put those concerns because, yeah. That's why That's why I think this is going to be good for the game because, like, you can play with your friends. Yes, the trade-off is longer queues, right? Which I can agree is, is, is going to be a frustration point of that. But will a lot of people start doing this to the point where the queues aren't that long, Right? I think I think the wide range groups, honestly, um, to that one gags. I think that has to do with like if you're like if I'm a champion player playing with a bronze player, the champion player may just be like they might have to match you up against a grandmaster group with the wide group, and then like the champion player just dominates on DPS, and the champion on the other team is like support, and then the DPS player goes around and carries and like every single game, and then you know what I mean. So I, I think there's ways that they just it's yeah. Uh, there's been a lot in season 10 actually so um we yesterday there was a blog post this is another uh, post so solo players will only play with other solo players or narrow groups 
narrow groups are the normal groups that you have, right? Those are the normal groups. Those are what you have now, right? So if you're a solo player or you're grouped up in the actual grouping restrictions they have, you are in a separate MMR, not MMR group, sorry. You're in a separate group. You'll be in like, you'll be getting the same, like, you know, you're in a separate group. So you will only play against players who are either solo or in what they consider narrow groups, okay? So you won't be a solo player being put into a random game like that. This also means we won't allow a wide group of four players to queue because solo players do not join matches with wide groups. Oh, well then there you go. I actually, that right there is something I had a question about. So you can't, you can't four stack. Is this correct? You can't four stack a, um, you can't do a four stack wide group. So you can do a three stack wide group because you can look for a two stack wide group, but you cannot do a, a four stack wide group. That is good. That means that as a solo player, you will not have to worry about this at all. Just so you know, because you did this kind of, you can't wide four stack. Okay, there you go. So this means that because you can't four stack, as a solo player, you do not have to worry about being put into a wide group game. Okay? So if that was a concern, it does not exist there. So if you're a solo queue and you will not have to deal with that. This change should encourage players not to play in alt, account, alt accounts when they want to play with their friends. You can look forward to this new update for competitive matchmaking to begin in season 10. Now, Gavin, I will say I do have one concern on, on this part of alt accounts. You know where I'm going to go with this. If the ladder is still like this in top 500, I still think players will use alt accounts. Just, just to add on to that. If top 500 isn't shifted, I think this will still be a thing because that, the queue times get too long um, at, at the top end of the ladder. So players just will go log on alts. I'll, 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 although you have that data, so you may know more than I do. Maybe I'm just over-exaggerating that and there's like four players are playing alts. But just for the sake of this, I want to feel like I'm correct in this and I'm going with that. <laughs> Update on stop and levers. So either way, though, like I think this this whole this whole like competitive change is huge. I think this is huge. I, now, in halfway through the season, I might feel differently, but I feel like this is good. You know what, Hobbs? Some people just like to play ranked. Some people don't like playing quick play as much. I mean, you gotta remember, like some people just want to play the whole map. Some people just like love the idea of like maybe somebody's playing Overwatch for the first time and they're in bronze and they're and they're one of their good friends is in in champion or, or GM. And they just want to see how ranked is. They want to play with their friend. They want to get the ranked experience. And maybe they only get 1% for winning. But, like, they get to actually play the game with their friends. Not everybody wants to solo queue. Not everybody wants to return to Overwatch after four months of not playing. And then try to solo queue when they can go and queue with their friend who's higher rank. But they can get the, 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 the fun concept of playing with their friend. Because a lot of times that's what happens in Overwatch is that people will take breaks from Overwatch. They will go and do something else. They will return... Their friend has now climbed a bunch since then. They can't play. They log on to the alt or they don't play it all together. And then that's that. This allows for these players to be able to play again if they don't play for a while. There's a lot here that I like. Obviously, we'll wait and see how it goes. Right? All right. Anyway, update on stop and levers. We've already made adjustments to discourage leaving unranked games of Overwatch. And there are a few more changes coming in Season 10. We've also taken a firm stance on levers and comp and have a new update for that game mode as well. For unranked games, and we saw a little bit of this earlier, players who leave four of their last 20 games played or put on a cooldown for 20 minutes before they can queue again. Now you can with an increase to four hours if you have at least six of their last five. 20 games. We'll be adding two additional tiers, a five-minute penalty for leaving two of their last 20 games, and a 48-hour suspension from queuing for any matchmaking mode for those who leave 10 or more of their last 20 games played. Very... Few players deliberately leave 50% or more games, but we think this step will help further reduce the impact levers can have in an unranked Overwatch 2 game. To work back into good standing, competitive now counts towards a player's 20 games played. Here's the whole chart. We kind of went over it earlier, but basically, if you leave a lot of comp games, you're going to get a comp season ban, so 10 games throughout. Um, and most importantly, if you leave 6 to 9 games, you'll get a 4-hour ban. Why is this important? Because 6, 6, 6, 6... Six and six nine, sixty nine, and four hours. I just realized something with this image. Chat. Six six and nine's games left. Four hours. Now let me watch my mouse. Watch my mouse. Four games, twenty hours. All in the same line. Is it connected in some way? There's no way this isn't on purpose. There this is just this is I see I see you, Gavin. We we all see it. This, 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 listen, I see it right here. Yeah, we've connected all the dots. I'm like the, you're like, like what, Charlie from It's Always Sunny? And he's just sitting there like this in front of the, in front of the, the dots connected like, you know? The, yeah, that one. 
Competitive play is also receiving a notable addition to its penalty system for leaving games. Players can be suspended from comp play whenever they leave any competitive match, which it always was 15 minutes when you left the first one. Penalties start off small at 15 minutes, but quickly escalate if they repeatedly leave games and can even trigger a season ban, which will disqualify them for the remainder of that competitive season. When players compete or complete several competitive matches, they'll work back into good standing. So basically, if you don't leave games for a while, it'll get you back into like the, the good part of that. Now we're introducing a rule to competitive play that caps the total number of games you can leave in a season, regardless of how frequent it is. Players who leave 10 competitive matches in a season will be immediately banned for the season. The only thing that feels bad for is if like you have like internet issues a lot. But at the same time, it's like if you're having those internet issues, so I, I can see where people have that discussion. As I'm saying, it, it, like I said, like it, it, you wouldn't want to queue at that point if you're, you feel like your internet is disconnecting you a lot in, in the confidence, right? That's, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm saying, like I think that's what people will, will mention that. But or if, oh yeah, what if my game crashes uh, from playing the game too long? Because that happens to me all the time. This should help curb those players who deliberately choose to leave a match, thinking they won't have to deal with a lengthy suspension if they haven't left their most recent games played. Remember, deliberately leaving or having a disconnection still counts as leaving. What we understand is often non-intentional. It still greatly impacts the high-stakes experience that comp excuse me that competitive provides. While any player can have a technical issue when playing, it's important not to jump back into comp until you are confident that any technical issue is resolved. Does like does the tank roll count as a technical issue right now? I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm taking too many. I'm having too much fun with that one today. All right, if you need help troubleshooting disconnects or crashes, be sure to check out our support site. Expand in Streamer Protect. And thank you for this because streamer, I, I just want to give you an idea of like why I've wanted the streamer mode. I like playing quick play. I enjoy playing quick play. It's fun for me to do sometimes. It got to the point where I would get into quick play. People would see my name. They'd be like, I've heard how good he is on DPS. Like I, you can't, he's a dominant DPS. They, they call him the powerhouse DPS player of his own house or own apartment. And the best thing that we can do in this situation is go in 1v5 regardless of the outcome of the game and make sure that he goes 4 and 22. So it, for me, I, I enjoy the aspect of being able to play quick play now and, and not only make the game just better for my teammates because they don't have to deal with the 1v5 that's happening and better for the... It just makes it better across the board. So I'm looking forward to being able to enjoy quick play again without like the, oh, I got to dive this Widow and you can watch me go 4v4 uh, four and 22. He says, is this cope for me dying on DPS all the time? No, I'm still going to go 4 and 22, but I'll feel better about it now because I know I won't be getting Dove 1v5, you know? Anyway, let me continue on. Uh, last year, we introduced features that enabled... Oh, wait, sorry, I got to read this again. Streamer Protect will now be called Hide My Name and will be an effective tool for all players, not just streamers. Well, listen. Last year, we introduced features that enabled players to hide their account information on their own client with the goal of discouraging disruptive players from watching streamers and attempting to queue into that streamer's game. However... This did, not this did not address harassment issues for players who were better known. And what they mean by that is you would hide your name from yourself, so you're assuming that if you hide your name, they won't know they're in the game with you, but they hit tab and go, oh, I'm in their game, right? When? <laughs> Let's go! Oh, I love this. When you activate hide my name, your battle tag will appear as one of several dozen randomly generated battle tags, ranging from Crusher99 to Garlic Bread, and many other fun references from Overwatch 2 in our community. We did a chat. Garlic Bread has made it to the game. Oh, thank you so much. I, it, is, it is so good to see. And this is why I said they, they embrace the memes now, which I love. So the Garlic Bread story goes like this. So basically there was somebody who kept getting, who got banned. And they kept posting on Reddit for like, I'd say like 10 days straight of like, I got banned unfairly. I can't believe they did this. Look at like what they said in my like in my image. So they kept posting the screenshot after about the 10th Reddit post they made. It finally got upvoted, right? It got upvoted all the way to like the top of Reddit. So people start going, are you kidding me right now? Like, I can't believe that they would ban you for just saying garlic bread. For just saying garlic bread. Because in the, in the thing, it just showed like the, the person in the chat saying, hey, what, what do y'all think about garlic bread? And then they got banned. So people are like, I can't believe they're banning for this now. They're not looking at this stuff. Like, what are you doing? 
Like, this is ridiculous. I can't believe you're doing that, right? That, that, so that's what happened. They were they were getting really like they get really upset about that. And obviously, I'm also extending this story out so the people who are in the remaining of their ads can hear the rest of the story. Um, so they they have this this screenshot and they have like 300, 400 comments. People saying this is ridiculous. Like I can't believe they'd ban you for that. And then, and then this is where Gavin comes in. So Gavin is able to look at the screenshot, look at the code. So all of these. All of these screenshots have codes on them that show you like an actual like ID of like your ticket or of like your band. So he, so, so Gavin looks it up and goes, well, I'd like, and, and this is not like, this is like not, this is not, this is like paraphrasing. This isn't exact words. Gavin goes, you know, I'd really like to thank you for, for bringing this to our attention and also using a real like screenshot of an ID number. So the ID number was, was there but the, everything else was completely different. So they made up the, they, they just edited the screenshot and made all of it up, right? Made all of it up. So it went from like people being like, oh, I can't believe they'd ban you for that to people being like, what in the world? It was, it was a meme the whole time. Like this person was trying to make it seem like this was happening. So Gavin makes that post. The person deletes the thread, deletes their Reddit account and didn't post anything again about that stuff. You didn't see anything. They just, they deleted their Reddit account and didn't even respond to Gavin doing that. Because because Blizzard actually went into the Reddit thread and was like, this is massively incorrect. You said their ticket number. So, okay, so Gavin's giving context in this. Their ticket number couldn't exist because it was higher than any ticket they'd ever taken. They scrambled a real ticket number to get the fake one they posted. So they tried to scramble some random number. It actually was the legitimate number. So they... <laughs> and then they found everything. And then they deleted their own... Th yep. They just deleted their Reddit, and that was it. This name will be displayed not only for your own game client, but also for all other players in the lobby. After the match, players can see everyone's actual bat battle tags by checking the social menu, which I'm fine with. This is this is one. This goes back to once again, chat. This is what we call a W. This is a good streamer mode. This is good to have. This is also good to have if you want to chill. If you don't like, there's a lot here that I really love, and it, it's a great update to this in general. So. Don't worry, if you encounter disruptive players and are unsure if they are using a covered battle tag, you can still report any player you encounter during and after the match, which will be reported to that player's account, which is good. All right? That is good, in my opinion. Expand and avoid his teammate. Buy your void slots in the shop. No, I'm I, sorry. I had to do that one more time. Uh, expand and avoid his teammate. Avoid his teammate allows players the choice to not be paired with specific players on the same team when finding a match. This is a good way to step away from your disruptive players or players with a different play style than yours. In a future update, you'll be you'll be able to add up to 10 players on your avoid as teammate list. For most players below Grandmasters, this likely will allow you to avoid all 10 players on your list. Those on the higher end of the rank ladder may still see some of your avoided players that are lower in priority, especially when your queue times get longer. So what this means is that, just to kind of summarize this for like, for like the GM side of things, you may avoid 10 players, but at the same time, they're not going to prevent you from getting a game, right? Yeah, this is not season 10. Okay, that, that's fair. That's good to know. I mean, it's still good to talk about, right? So just to kind of go from here, by the way, with the uh, 10 players on the list is basically if you avoid 10 players right now in top 500, you might not get a game. So what it does is it gives you a priority list. And then the way that that priority list works is that let's say you put a player who you avoided, but you're like, I don't know, like it... it They'll be at the bottom of your list. They'll more than likely end up on your team again if a game is need to be found. The current avoid his teammate system allows you to avoid up to three players you encounter. This has been the maximum because adding more slots would make finding matches for players at higher ranks like GM or champion impossible. However, thanks to your feedback, we're going to help give everyone more agency over which players they are paired with on their team. To better tailor your experience, you can toggle which players you absolutely don't want to play with versus those who you would rather avoid if you can help it. When your list is full and you want to avoid a new player, they will be added automatically. Drop in their, the player who's been on the list the longest. Don't worry, you can pin any players to ensure they don't fall off your list, which is important because there are players that you never want to unavoid if they're causing issues, and now you can keep them on there. This will enable a smoother user experience to allow you to get back to the queue faster. And you can see here how it works. Avoided player number one, most likely to be avoided all the way down to least likely to be avoided. So longer lists, chance you get avoided player number 10 or number nine, but 
it, it still has them on that list. And if it can create a game for you, you won't have to worry about that, right? So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, mitigating disruptive chat. We never consider it acceptable for anyone to harass, insult, or abuse any other player through chat. We've already taken many steps to identify disruptive chat faster and taken action in cases of clearly identified disruptive chat and soon we'll have more updates to improve the chat experience for all players. When a player is action for disruptive chat or not playing fairly in the game, we demote their endorsement rate into zero. Even new players start at level one, so you can only reach this level if you are actioned for breaking the Blizzard in-game code of conduct. Conduct. Coming later this year, we're going to prevent anyone with a level of zero endorsement rating from using any text or voice chat in their matches. These privileges can be restored once the player reaches level one again, which is done by playing your best, helping your team, and communicating with the in-game ping system. I am going to see Blizzard's probably going to have an increase in um, uh, uh, name change uh, revenue because there's going to be players with the name literally saying endorse me because they're going to be stuck at level zero and they need players to endorse them to get to level one. So their name is now going to be endorse me, hoping that players will endorse them. Uh, we also recognize that some players like being disruptive to other players while they spectate their friends' matches. Since it's not possible to report spectators who are disruptive on console and very limited on PC, access to team and match chat channels will be removed. Friends can still chat with each other through a whisper. Card stuck endorsement level zero. I know, you can't, you can't get the endorsements. So... Just to look at this very quickly here and, and give an idea, this is a good change from everything that chat's been saying. This is a good change. You don't have to deal with that random person joining spectating and just talking crap to you. And that's basically what it's preventing. And they're saying you can just message your friends. Spectating should work in customs. We got that earlier. Faster reporting. Every day we work to action disruptive players and correct inappropriate behavior in our games. And your reports help us with this. However, we understand it's not easy to report when you're in the middle of a match. We're designing an easier-to-use interface that should enable all players to report as soon as they see disruptive behavior. And we look forward to sharing more later this year. Now, just to clarify, and they'll probably have to talk about this later in the blog post, disruptive behavior is not your tank hiding behind a wall waiting to get healed. Okay, if your tank's not pushing in sometimes, it's probably a reason. Okay, so you don't need to, you don't need to report your tank mid-match um, just because they're not moving up. Remember, when you report a player as being abusive in either text or voice chat as soon as possible, it's easier for our system to better identify that player's disruptive behavior to learn more about how to report players in Overwatch. See our support article. And then we have uh, introducing player surveys. We're always watching for your feedback, whether it be on social media, through communities from our top content creators, or other places of note. As we continue striving to make Overwatch 2 a safer and more inclusive experience for all players, we're providing a new way for players to help make their voices heard. We'll be introducing new player surveys into Overwatch 2. We'll randomly choose players whenever they compete a match, complete a match after the end of a match flow, including the play of the game and your progression updates. If you are selected, you will be prompted by a new splash screen with an invitation to participate in an optional survey that you can access by clicking the link or scanning the QR code on your phone. All right. I mean, which is good. This is good to have. I think this is good. You'll have your chance to let us know what you think about new modes, events, and features, along with telling us how we can help protect you from disruptive players. We look forward to seeing your participation when we launch this feature in a future update. Good to have. I mean, that's, that's, these are all cool to have. Thanks for playing together. To recap, our change to grouping with friends and competitive lever penalty updates and our improved streamer protect will launch in Season 10. The other features and more will be coming in the following seasons. We'll be back with more updates later, so stay tuned as we continue to work on stopping cheating and promote good teamwork in every match of Overwatch 2. Thanks everyone, and let's have a great game. That was that was a good one though. I, I season ten season ten is shaping up to be a really good season, in my opinion. Still, we'll see. We can we can that could, that could always change, but so far it seems like it's shaping up to be a good season. So.